Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another match preview for Freiburg versus West Ham United in the Europa League group stages today. I am joined by the main man. You all know him, the absolute legend. Fever, how are you? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm getting there. You look like you've got like Jesus smiling on you, mate. <laughs> mate, I told you before. <laughs> With the light in the... It's that natural know. light. It's beaming today. It's beaming on Decanio behind me and Mr. Noble. Everything yeah. is good, and I am very excited tomorrow. I, I, I just love those those European jitters. I will never take those for granted. Like even against some um, top Labaca or whatever their name was, I was so excited. I really was. Like I, you just can't take these European matches for granted. And I just get so excited the day before every single one. I don't know how you feel. You probably feel the same way. I'm I'm over, I'm over the moon, mate. Let you know I me mean? West have uh, three years in Europe. He, I don't think I've ever seen that in my lifetime, ever. Uh, and the only time I've ever seen West Ham in Europe is when we're going on tour for yeah. friendlies. So, yeah, it's exactly. about it. Yeah, All going. right, let's cut to the chase. Let's get into this little general discussion of Freiburg versus West Ham United. 5.45 p.m. kickoff, 12.45 for me over here on the East Coast of the States. So, uh, Fever, tell me what you know about this team. We, we, we probably know some of the same general facts, but we'll – We'll uh, go back and forth between each other. You give me one. You give me one fact. I'll give you one. Well, they well they won two new at the weekend. Uh, I will say that they um, was at home against the team and won two new. They're eighth in the league. It was uh, Augsburg. Augsburg, yeah. Or so they, West Ham United pretty... player Reese Oxford still plays yeah. there, I believe. I think he still does, and we well, can see the two at the weekend. But yeah, I don't really know a lot about this team. But what I know is that they they're a pretty. They had a pretty good result in the first uh, game. I think they beat uh, Olympiacos in the end. And um, yep, I think it's going to be a tough beat test. Beat 3-2. Yeah. So I think it's going to be a tough yeah, test. Yeah, the one thing I, I know about Freiburg, and again, I, I wouldn't take it for fact, but because I do, I do wager on world soccer a fair bit, I always feel like when I'm looking at Freiburg, they're always – they they feel like the Crystal Palace of the Bundesliga. They're always bang mid table, like yeah. they're just they're a consistent mid table club. You know what you're getting with them, and nothing really I feel like would surprise you with them. Like they'll have the odd, like like Crystal Palace, they'll have the odd great win, like they did against United away. And yeah, that's really all I know. They're eighth in the Bundesliga. Um, and again, I said we bounce back and forth off each other, but I think I'm, I might have a bit more stats than you, so I'm just going to read them out. I think they have a good uh, – I don't know how many matches they played. They probably played – they might have played one more than us because I know Bundesliga starts a bit early. But um, yeah. they have a tie for joint top goal score. I think there's about four or five players that all have one goal. So <laughs> tells you something. Uh, Vincenzo Grifo, the Italian winger, leads them with three assists. And mind you, these stats are all in Bundesliga play. And then he is at the top of the goals and assists with four, and everyone else has one. So you could say Vincenzo Grifo looks like the main man for Freiburg. Mm -hmm. So that if you have if you have anything else you'd like to talk about Freiburg, please let me know. Let's Maybe put it this way. Me. Let's put it this way: it's, it's going to be a tough test. Whatever happens when we go uh, when we go over there on uh, Thursday night, the difference is with me is that are, the, are can this team handle a Premier League outfit? Like it's okay doing it against Olympiacos away from home, and they did do a good, good job on Olympiacos. I'm going to be honest, and this game will really tell me where West Ham's really at. I mean, this is the hardest game. What do I know? What more do I know about them? Not a lot. And this is this is the thing that uh, is a bit daunting for West Ham is basically. We don't know what we're going to walk into, especially with no fans there. Also, yeah. you know that's what that's what I was going to transition into. But I would say this is where I I do really rate David Moyes and his uh his knockout style of football. Yeah, I do. I do like. I think his style of managing is great for matches like this because we know nothing about Freiburg. Obviously, they've got film and whatever they've been watching clips or whatever. But we don't consistently play opponents like this. And I feel like David Moyes is a pretty decent knockout style of manager when you don't know what you're walking into. But we'll transition into the West Ham side. So, like you said, no fans. 
uh, in Germany for our UEFA ban. Um, to be honest, I wasn't sure if it was uh, going to be like a match with no fans or it was just us. I don't know why I thought that. But going into Freiburg, no away support. Going to be all Freiburg. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Tough. It's going to be tough for West Ham, I think, this one. Yeah, yeah. I really do. They are. They're ferocious, I would yeah. say. Very ferocious. They're not like like uh, Alkmaar or the Dutch or maybe like Turkish ultras. They're just like a ve- they. I think I think the Bundesliga and their supporters they have a very good mix of like atmosphere and then like banter. Mm. Like mm. Just a ferocious bunch. They got the flares and all that as well. It's, it's going to be tough, mate. I like, listen, I, one thing I will say with West Ham when they don't uh, don't have fans there, they seem to play better. Like if, even in COVID, they were a very very good side when there was no sort of pressure on them, so to speak. Um, I don't know how West Ham are going to land in in Germany. If I'm honest, mate, this is one game I just can't really sort of tell you where I, I, I can see West Ham at. If someone said to me right now, you're going to go there and they're going to give a good account of themselves and take any sort of result back to London. I'm I'm all for it, but yeah, I, agree. I don't know. I don't know the pressure's on the other team really, because because like let's be honest, is there any real pressure on West Ham here? No fans, so they're gonna have no no one to applaud them. I, I suppose if West Ham do score early, like, there is gonna be the only celebrations you're gonna hear is from the bench. Yeah, and it's a bit of a mixed bag because I am looking at their last five and all all the goals have been scored two nil five six one, so it is a bit of a a mixed bag really don't know how to uh analyze them like i don't know what kind of team they are because i'm not going to act like i know anything about them besides the stuff i said earlier but if i were going into this match i would be expecting like a classic maybe 2-1 and i'm not i'm not predicting that by the way we will get to that yeah. but um yeah that's kind of the vibes i'm feeling and um i'm i'm excited to see how we play coming in and um and think, what and what impact it'll make on the weekend as well yeah. because these are two important matches because if we win say we win tomorrow right yeah we, we have a nice little nice little gap to start off the table i i i'm gonna be honest you are right what you just said there these next two games could like define us a little bit if we go to freiburg and we win and we win well talk about the confidence going into the newcastle game yeah. on sunday like do you know what i mean we'll be bouncing into sort of the ls really looking forward to that game. Do you know what I'm saying? I am a bit concerned with the no fans situation because when West Ham go and they know they've got the fans there, they like it's a nice it's a good it's a feel good vibe. So to and, speak. Like, and the lineups for tomorrow and Sunday. That that is like honestly one reason it's a bit of a, a bit of a weird thing, but one thing I like about playing in Europe. I love trying to figure out what kind of lineup we're gonna play in Europe and then on yeah. Sunday because I mean Newcastle now I would <sighs> I wouldn't say heavy hitters now, but I mean they are not to be messed around with. They are to be respected, as always, of course. But mm-hmm. also Freiburg as well, decent side. Like we just can't go in there and put out a B side. We're gonna have to play a good mix of yeah. strong players. So um those are my final thoughts. You got any other general thoughts you have about the match before we go into these lineup predictions? Um I just think I just want to see West Ham go there and have no fear. That's the only thing I will yeah. say. Yeah, if West Ham go there and they buckle early, then we could we could have problems all night. But if West Ham stay strong and listen, the fans will be there in spirit, but it just won't be in the ground. That's as simple as that. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough and tough for all of us because even though I'm never at these matches, I do love hearing the support over the the telly, and you can hear them loud and clear. So. Let's move on to our lineup predictions. This one, really, in my opinion, there's really no like wrong answers to these yeah. or wrong opinions because, like I said, you're really going to have to think about Sunday because as much as I do love competing in Europe, we got to keep league form. And after that grueling start, or well, we're coming to the end of that grueling start as we approach our second international break. But um, I'll let you go first. I want you to tell me who you think Moyes is going to pick for Thursday and – what you would like to see? Um, this is a tough one, mate. Yeah. I, I think we could both agree that Fabianski is going to yeah. start. Yeah, so we'll we, we get Fabianski out of the way. The centre-halves, 
is a bit of a problem, really, because I, I know one of them, one of the normal centre halves is going to have to play, either Zuma or Aguirre. So, like, who do you go with out of the out of the two? So, I think yeah. Mavropanos plays. Now, Mavropanos is a right sided centre half. He's not a left sided centre half. So, it wouldn't be a bad shout in this game to play Mavropanos and, and Aguirre together. Right, I don't think you need to play Zuma in this game. I really don't. I think you've got like Mavra Pounce is decent in the air, both fast, both good, like yeah. decent. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, the right hand side, you've got Sufal, you've got Tilo. For me, I would start Sufal, I really would. I think you need to have consistency in, in that role. I think the left hand side really picks itself because we've got no one else, like yeah. Emerson's there. Can we afford to take it? Yeah, and I think playing Cresswell would be a bit of a risk. Yeah, and he's not really sort of. I don't. Even he hasn't played at all. Yeah, I don't even think he's fit, mate. And listen, if you take Emerson out, the only other person that could go there, well, excuse me, is Ben Johnson because there is no one else. So I'd play Emerson there. If we're playing a four-three-three, which it probably would be, or you like, know, in like, credit to Ben Johnson, I actually think Ben Johnson in, in European competition hasn't been that bad i think yeah. he's been okay so yeah, like yeah. if it if it did have to happen i wouldn't be i mean i wouldn't say i'd be totally against it but i wouldn't be like i wouldn't be bricking it i don't think this is the game for him though yeah, i think it's, it, it's a sort of i think it's a sort of game where you you see how you get on for the hour yeah just if a west Ham, thought, yeah. yeah if west Ham seems to sort of how can i put it if west Ham are in, in control of this game or West Ham are looking just yeah. to see it out, then you bring him on for the last 20 minutes sort right. of thing. Let's move um, on to your midfield. Do you play Alvarez in this game? That's, that, that is the million-dollar question because if you don't... I think then you have to. It, like, if, if you do, then basically the team is going to be pretty mixed up. Right? I can see I can see Side Ben Rama playing, Kudus playing, etc. Yeah? If you don't, then you can sort of go around it another way. Like for me, does does Alvarez play? I I wouldn't risk him myself in this one. I really wouldn't. I'd go with Suchek, Ward Prowse, Aquetta as, as the three, and then I'd go Kudus on the right. I'd go Ben Rahm on the left, and I'd go Jared Bone up front. I I think you need to you need to test that out. So is that your see, preference or prediction? That's my that's my sort of preference. What my prediction would be is I think Ben Rama plays. I think Kudus plays. I'm not sure on Alvarez because I, I just I just don't know on that one. All right. I, personally, so, I'd, I'd so take give me him out. so give me your predicted eleven. Quick fire. Predict, predicted eleven. Fab Cafel, Mavropanos, Agued, uh, Emerson because we the only left back we got. I think he goes with. Suchek, JWP, Paqueta, I think Paqueta plays, Kudus, Ben Rama, and I think I think Bowen will play instead of Antonio. All right. And any preferences in there that you would change if it was your eleven? Um nah. Okay. No, not, not really. My what I think Moyes will do. I think he'll go pretty strong again. Not a lot of changes. Fabianski in goal. I think he will play Sufal right back because he's just so informed. You just have to keep playing mm -hmm. him. Um, Mavropanos and Aguirre, That's that, I'm not against it, but it'd be tough for me because they, they're both very similar. Yeah. And you, you do need a bit of a balance. So I don't know if I'd go like Zuma and Aguirre or Mavropanos and Ogbana or maybe – Put Mavropanos on the left to zoom on the right. I don't know, but if my prediction, I I think he'll play Zuma in a Gerd. I don't know why. I just feel like he's not going to take this game lightly. If that makes sense, I think he's going to go mm. in not full. I think we could see close to full strength personally, and I I really don't think there's another way around it personally. So I'm going to go Zuma. Actually. Oh, it's so tough because Mavropanos was good. I think it's just, it's just I a think, dynamic. I think Mavropanos plays, mate. He's played in Germany before. Uh, it's just it makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, yeah. You know what? And Aguirre, he might, 
he might need another test to see if uh, Sheffield United wasn't a fluke or not. So my prediction, I'm going to go Mavropanos right center half, a Garrett left center half, even though that's not the dynamic I would go with. Yeah. I could see it happening. Emerson, 1,000% has to start. I think Alvarez will play because if he doesn't play, we have no sort of anchor in the midfield. Mm-hmm. Can, can JWP play as an anchor? Yes, but obviously the defensive side of things – I think Alvarez is is a bit more of a defensive presence than James Ward Prowse. Even though I think if we were to play Sloan out of the back, James Ward Prowse would be the perfect like pivot type of player to be distributing the ball. But I think he will go. I think he's going to go Suchek, Alvarez, JWP, and Paqueta again, and then oh, I and I oh. I think Bowen will play, and I think Kudis will play. And I don't know whether Kudis might start up top or play out wide, Bowen up top or out wide. I don't know, but I I think he will go strong. And I really don't have a preference. I really don't have a preference of what I would do personally because I think we can't really go wrong. My only prediction is that the lineup Mm. will be strong. I don't think think you risk Antonio in this game, especially when when you've got a game on Sunday. That's the only thing I will say. He come off uh, the other week with like a groin strain. Um, I don't think this is the type of game. I would, I would like to, I to. would say this. I would like to see Kudis possibly start up top just to see if he can maybe do sort of a job that Antonio can do. Not saying mm-hmm. that he will or he can't, but I, I, I need to see it just for. It's like a nice little, uh, nice little study guide. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to see, I want to see the answers before the test. I think, yeah, I think this is a sort of game though. West Ham will try not to lose. Like they will yeah. try not to lose this game. Like I don't, I can't, can't see West Ham going over there and going all out attack. No, I think like West Ham will play the same way they've yeah. always played. Yeah, and I, I don't know how Freiburg play. Like I said, but I wouldn't be surprised if it went a bit like the Sheffield United match, where it's it's very open, a yeah. lot of running back and forth because. I feel like both teams just don't know a lot about each other. Uh, preferably, we'd obviously like to sit back, play on the counter. But um, I just, I in these European matches, you don't you don't see a lot of that unless you're playing a mm. really really like good opponent. So like yeah. Fry, Freiburg West Ham, I think for a neutral European football fan who just watches Champions League Europa League, I think this is a pretty solid match. Yeah. Should be entertaining. I agree, so I agree, we'll move on. To the final part, our score predictions. Um, you want me to go first, or you want to go first? You go first on this one. Okay. So, at the beginning, in the general discussion, I said this does seem like a bit of a a two one match from a uh, what I've seen from Freiburg's recent five match form. But um, I I really don't know what to think of this one. I I think it's still early in the group stages. I think Freiburg are going to want to take advantage of the atmosphere. And that I could see that possibly resulting to play in our favor, which is to sit back, counter, clear everything away, which gives me confidence. I'm not going to lie. So um, I'm going to go for – and, again, it seems like they really haven't scored a lot of goals. I know they lost 4-2. To one of the opponents, I forget which one. I think it was Dortmund, but I'm gonna go a very, very scrappy two nil. I think we score twice. I think we score around halftime after mm. after a decent half or decent, mostly first half of defending, and then I do think we nick the second goal to kind of end the match because I, I just can't see Freiburg with that with that f- atmosphere that advantage of all the fans being there and we have none, I can't see them defending or letting the play be that open. They're going to want to dominate possession. But yeah. then again, they, they've got to know that we love to sit back and counter. So it's an interesting dynamic. Um, I, don't, I, I generally don't know in this one because it could go many, many ways. Um, I'll I tell you to... right now, I was going to do one, one or two now, because that's just how I see the match going. Do you know what? I feel the draw all day long in this one. I feel West Ham will look at this game 
and they will go, if we don't lose this game, we can possibly win the group. Do you know what I mean? I think if we go over there and we lose, then this team's on six points. They ain't going to lose against the team we, we previous played, uh, back at Topolia, right? So, basically, West Ham will be looking at this. In the, in the back of their mind, they think a point in Germany is not a bad result considering yeah. we've got to get them back to the LS, yeah? Now, for me, I want to see West Ham play, play the cute game in this one. Right? At the weekend, they played Sheffield United. They've done the job. They, they yeah. sat there and they, they waited for this game sort of thing. I am going to say a draw. I don't think West Ham lose in Germany, but I don't think West Ham will have the power to win the game. I think West Ham will go there, make it hard. Um, I actually agree with you. I think a one always on the cards. I think if we score first, then it might be a bit of a different story because then we might have something to hold on to. The, but... the dynamic is just its just too mysterious. It's too yeah. mysterious. We don't know what we're going to see. and Whoever gets this right, you got to be a fortune teller because, like I said, I don't watch enough Freiburg. To really know is that uh anything else you got? Um, basically, I think on the week uh, on the weekend's game, and obviously tomorrow uh, tomorrow's game, um, I feel it's going to define West Ham this season. If we go to Germany, like I say, and I, my prediction is a one all draw, and we win comfortable over there, then people have got to start standing up and saying, you know what, West Ham are actually doing something this year. Yeah. Like they they look like they're going up a little bit of another level. <clears throat> so I want West Ham to sort of play the game a little bit. If they can't win the game in Germany, don't think about, um, like, get the players off, yeah. see the game out. Some of these are big game also. Be proactive. And, an, and then we've got an international break. So, yeah, looking forward to it. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how we get yeah, on. I think we can agree. That's the last thing we want to see, players with – with big injuries right before our second international break. And I, mm. that will do it for us. People, before we head out, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Please smash a like on the video. We're trying to get to 100 likes every single video, every single stream. I will be doing a watch along tomorrow, and hopefully my Paramount Plus will be way better than the Peacock crap that I had to deal with against Sheffield United. And if you'd like to support us further, we have a membership program going on link is in the description if you'd like to contribute and help our journey forward but with that being said we are out of here we will see you all tomorrow for the player ratings and afterthought combination from us to you stay safe one love thank you all